Lyle Lyle Crocodile is the first movie that I'm talking about in the What I Watch live stream. This film was released in late 2022, directed by Will Speck and Josh Gordon, who I think they're a directing duo. And I think they've mainly directed comedies. I think they've mainly done like, uh, like R-rated comedies before this movie. Like they did uh, Office Christmas Party from 2015 and Blades of Glory from 2007. So uh, quite the switch in direction there, uh, considering uh, what they've done in the past. This film was distributed by Sony. And uh, to be honest, when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it was going to be absolutely dreadful. I did not like the CGI for the Crocodile Lyle. And I thought this was going to be another one of them really badly made family films like the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies and the Smurfs movies that Sony did in like 2010, 2011. I was like, oh, this is going to be so bad. But believe it or not, this movie actually had decent buzz when it came out. Uh, some YouTubers and critics that I actually do respect, particularly Sean Chandler and Rachel Wagner, Rachel's reviews, they both actually really enjoyed this film. And when I saw that this movie was on Netflix, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give this movie a shot. So what did I think of this movie? Well, first, let me read the plot synopsis. When the Prim family moves to New York City, their young son, Josh, struggles to adapt to his new school and new friends. All of that changes when he discovers Lyle, a singing crocodile who loves baths, caviar, and great music, living in the attic of his new home. But when Lyle's existence is threatened by evil neighbor Mr. Grumps, yeah, that's a real name, the Prims must band together to show the world that family can come from the most unexpected places. So, I had like zero expectations going into this movie because I hated the trailer for this movie. I thought it was going to be one of the biggest duds of 2022 so i avoided this film like the plague however this movie was actually really good i am shocked to say that but this is actually a really enjoyable family film even the cgi which turned me off in the trailer of lyle the cgi is not the best but after a while i started to warm up to the design of lyle because lyle is such a likable character that, you know, I honestly didn't mind how the character was designed. It's definitely not near as off-putting as those Smurfs back in 2011. So, got to give it that at least. I think, I think what also helps is this film is a musical. And I am a sucker for musical movies. And so, uh, the musical elements of this movie were actually done very well. Uh, the songs were written by Pasek and Paul, who previously uh, worked on movies like La La Land and The Greatest Showman, uh, two musicals I absolutely love with amazing soundtracks. And I don't think any of the songs in La La Crocodile match the highs that these two writers did with the La La Land songs and The uh, Greatest Showman songs, but there's still some show-stopping tunes in there. And uh, they cast uh, Sean Mendez as Lyle, which I thought was going to be a turnoff at first because I'm like, Sean Mendez, is he a good actor? I don't know. Sometimes when you have these big pop stars play roles like this, normally their acting is not the best. And a smart move that they did on the writer's part was that Lyle does not talk throughout the entire movie. All this crocodile does is sing. And when you have Sean Mendez, who's good at singing, he does have some good songs. That actually, it makes the, the casting makes a lot more sense when you have Sean Mendez, who's good at singing. He doesn't have to rely on acting, and I don't know if he's a good actor or not, but he's a good singer. And if you're just playing a singing crocodile who doesn't talk but just sing, it's actually it's actually a good casting choice. So, major respect for uh, going in that direction. Uh, also, the biggest surprise to me was actually. Javier Bardem, who plays almost like a musical con man who's trying to exploit Lyle for his own gain, but he still cares for the character. And you see this like moral complex throughout the entire character, throughout the story. 
And you know, Javier Bardem, he's kind of been typecast in a lot of these like very scary, sadistic villain roles. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing because Javier Bardem is great in those villain roles. Like, look at No Country for Old Men and Skyfall for further proof of that. So I'm just used to seeing him in villainous roles. Here he's like a very happy-go-lucky, a little, little bit of little bit conniving at times, but he's a song and dance man at heart. Yes, you got the bad guy from No Country for Old Men. Remember how scary he was in that movie? He's a song and dance man in Lyle and Cro Lyle, Lyle Crocodile. And you know what? He did an awesome job. To me, Javier Bardem was the absolute standout of the entire movie. Like, There's this one musical number with him and the Lyle character. I think the song's called uh, Just the Two of Us Now, which in my opinion is the best song in the movie. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I enjoyed the choreography. was real good. Javier, he, he sings pretty good. Not the best singer, but... You know, he can carry a tune at least. And the choreography is awesome. I, I applaud his commitment uh, to the role. Uh, even the, I think even the family aspect with the family moving in and the kid discovering Lyle in the attic and they form a good little bond and it helps him overcome, I think, his fears of being in a new place, a new home. Uh, it was very sweet to watch. Yeah, I think the story itself it does feel, it is, I guess, a little bit kind of run of the mill. Parts of the storyline kind of feel like E.T. at times, but not near as emotional. And it's definitely, I think, played a little bit more for laughs uh, with the comedy, which I don't know if the comedy is fully as consistent as it could be. The villain is kind of hilarious, and some of the story elements with the villain don't always work. The character, Mr. Grumps. Uh, the character is very over the top and he's memorable, but there are some contrivances in the story, which do take me out of the movie at times, especially when it's revealed there's a connection between Mr. Grumps and Javier Bardem's character, which I feel like should have been established at the beginning of the movie instead of like a last minute reveal, which to me, when they did that, it just came out of nowhere. However... Front and center, it's an entertaining family film. It's got a big heart. I enjoyed the musical numbers. Sean Mendez does a good job playing this character. Even the CGI for a while, I got used to it by the end of the film. And it's all around an enjoyable watch. Like, if you have kids, they're going to tap their toes. They're going to enjoy uh, the entertainment value of this movie. It's a sweet little family film. It doesn't really pander to the lowest common denominator. Uh, even some of the jokes they do in the film aren't as dreadful as I thought they were going to be. And it actually, there's a good mix for anyone in the family to watch. Uh, even the There's even some good fleshed out moments, even with the parents who aren't treated like idiots in this movie. They're well fleshed out characters who... They do have their own fears and their own issues, but the family does grow back together by the end of the film. And all around, it's a sweet watch. I enjoyed La La Crocodile. Not a great movie, but still a really good movie with a big heart and some absolutely memorable musical numbers. And if anything proves that Javier Bardem can sing and dance, that was a pleasant surprise to me. Uh, I'll be giving La La Crocodile, I gave it a four out of five on Letterboxd. And a 76 out of 100 on my 100-point scale.